this is uh, welcome. Uh, I want to read you another biography from a brother in India. This is one of those unusual uh, testimonies that we receive from time to time. They're becoming more common now, to be honest with you, although I wouldn't still call it common. And you'll understand what I mean in a moment. But um, in the past, sometimes people have been scared by testimonies like this brother has because it is so unusual. He talks about what we would call a miracle occurring, and that miracle brought him to Christ. Now, I'm not going to say this happened. I expect it did. Maybe he imagined it. Maybe he dreamed it. But I do know this, just because it hasn't happened to me doesn't mean it hasn't happened to someone else. Uh, the thing he's going to talk about is the very thing that the Apostle Paul talks about. And we would be inclined to say, well, he probably kind of got that from reading the book of Acts and seeing how Paul got converted. The only problem is he never heard of the Apostle Paul and had never even read a Bible until sometime after his conversion. So is God capable of revealing himself to people in miraculous ways? Well, if he isn't, why we call him God. Does he do it? I'm sure he does. Does he do it every time in every way we read about? Only God knows that. I'm not going to judge his brother's testimony. I'm going to share it with you and let you be blessed by it. But we can judge his works. And when you see the works he's done for God, it might make you more inclined to believe he didn't have a nightmare after all. In fact, it's a pretty good dream. Let me get to the story. His name is Dadala Papa Rao. His number is 1062. He says, I belong to Dandamura village. We are all low caste people. And here there are some rich people because of their land property. My younger brothers rear cattle that belong to the rich landlords. We're very poor. Some Christians would come to our village sometimes and teach about Jesus. But I never attended or paid any respect to their words. One day I was in the fields planting the tiny paddy plants, meaning little, little sprouts of rice that they plant first and then let it grow. At noon we take rest. Let, let me stop so I, I don't confuse you with that. We think of planting crops as throwing out seeds, but when you plant rice, you don't do it that way. You, you grow rice in like a hothouse environment. You plant the seed into the soil and the water, and then when it gets about so big, so big, you pull it out carefully. You don't want to destroy the roots. And then you go out to the rice paddies that's deep in water and you plant it down in the water so just a little bit of the shoot is sticking above the water. As the sun hits it, it grows, soaks up the water, and later you have the rice harvest. So that's what he's talking about here when he says he was in the fields planting the tiny, or the, the tiny paddy plants. It was the very, very beginning of the process. He says at noon we take rest. And it was at about 12 o'clock noon that I saw a bright light around me. I fell down as I could not bear to see the light. And when I got up, I heard a figure in pure white garments speaking to me. And the same person asked me to do gospel work. And he said, I am the chosen vessel by him. I did not know what to do. I called the other women and men and told them what all happened. They said it was the Lord who came to me and told me to be his disciple. I went to a pastor in the village, uh, wouldn't you, uh, and informed him about how, I, how a light shone around me. He also wondered at what I said. And he said, St. Paul also was asked and appointed by God to be his disciple in that same manner. He asked me to confess my sins and take baptism. So I did. I never heard about Jesus' teachings. And I, brought, I bought a Bible from the pastor and started reading. I stopped my father's work of rearing cattle, and I did not go to my house. I had no food for many days. I went out of the house with my Bible and started witnessing about Jesus. My parents hired someone that tried to cure me of what they thought was demon possession. That man beat me. Eventually, I ran away. I lost my property for Christ. I lost my sisters, my brother, and even my mother. But with the help of a pastor, I started a church. Please pray for us. Since that time, and we began supporting him, he says that he has led 1,000 
363 souls to Christ, mostly adults. He's baptized 1,240 of those converts. He has evangelized 93 villages, and he has started 67 churches. Keep in mind, each church is being pastored by someone that he led to Christ and trained to be a pastor so that he could now move on to another village and plant another church. You say, do you think he really saw that vision? Sure wish I could see a vision like that if I could end up producing those kind of results, don't you? Now, you know what? Some of you might say, well, why didn't he get saved before he saw the vision? If you remember in the book of Acts, Paul had Jesus appear to him. It blinded him. He was taken into the home of Ananias there in Damascus, where I've been. And it was after that that he converted to Christ. The Lord just got his attention. He blinded him to get his attention. And evidently he chose to do the same thing with this man. Uh, does this mean that it happened exactly the way? This is the, this is the way he remembers it after many years. Uh, and I don't want to be so bogged down with if it happened this way, did it happen this way, as to give glory to God that he's changed this man's life, who for the rest of his life now has lived being denounced by his family and has started 67 churches for the glory of God. To me, that's a greater miracle than the fact that he may have seen a bright light that got his attention. But you know what? If I didn't believe God could do it, I wouldn't be serving him today. I'll leave it up to you to decide if it's true or not. But be blessed to know that around the world, many people are coming to Christ, particularly in Islamic nations, because they have a dream or they see a vision. And because of that dream or vision, they seek out to find a copy of the Word of God, read it, and come to Christ for salvation. That's why we have our smugglers ministry, raising money to get Bibles into these places around the world where people do not have Bibles. God is going to get your attention one way or the other. And I hope we've got your attention that you'll follow the, the link at the bottom of this video where it'll take you to show you how you can get involved in supporting a national preacher somewhere in the world. Maybe one with not quite as bright a testimony as this one has, but they need your help nonetheless. God bless you. We'll see you next time.